Okay, so um, this is going to be a tutorial um, to show you how to create this um, David Copperthorne effect um, in Photoshop. Um, you can see I've already downloaded an image from um, pexels.com, which is a free um, stock photo website. So I've just chosen this, um, uh, this image to work with. Um, you can see that the colour scheme is perhaps a little bit different to um, what David Copperthorne used. So we're just going to apply like a photo filter initially to try to um, bring through some of these cooler colours like these aquas and these yellows. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer um, so that I've got the original one locked away if I uh, need to return to it at all. And I'm just going to make it invisible for now. Um, I'm going to come up to image and adjustments and photo filter. And here you can see there's a number of presets that you can apply um, to create different effects. So we've got warm in one here and then a cool in one is obviously a lot bluer. Um, all these sorts of different um, colour schemes on here. Um, that one's quite similar actually to um, David Copthorn. I did think the underwater one might work well. Um, and it's quite sort of aquity as well. Um, we'll go with that one, that'll do. Um, so I've adjusted the colour. If you um, needed to adjust the contrast or the exposure of your image, or if you needed to play around with the dodge and burn tool at all, um, now's the time to do that. Um, before that you before you progress any further then um, with this image manipulation. Um, I'm happy with that as it is, so I'm just going to carry on and I'm going to try to get this um, effect. Now, when I looked really closely at this image, um, it was difficult to see how he'd created it initially, but I think it's just a matter of um, making concentric circles um, with the image. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer again, like so. Um, I'm going to hide that bottom layer and I'm going to use this elliptical marquee tool here so you can have different shapes that we use in the elliptical one. Now what you'll need to do, you'll need to press shift on the keyboard as you draw with the tool so that it makes a perfect circle. If you don't um, press shift it will become like an oval or an ellipsis instead. Now currently this tool has selected all those pixels within that circular shape but what I want to do is I want to select this area on the outside of the circle. So I'm going to come up to select and inverse. And then you can see now there's now a dotted line going around the edge of the image. And it means that this part of the image is now selected instead. If I press backspace on the keyboard, you can see that that takes that part of it away. And then I can press Command D um, or Control D if you're working on a um, laptop or a PC. Um, and that deselects, command D to deselect. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this layer um, a couple of times actually, like so. Let's do one more. There we go. Now, if I wanted to rename these, I could, um, if I wanted to, you know, name it circle one, circle two, and so on. Um, if you want to rename um, a uh, layer, you just simply double click on it like that and it highlights the name of it and you could you know, type in whatever you're going to whatever you're going to call it, for example. Okay, Okay. so um, this initial circle I'm going to keep at this size. I'm going to go up a layer. Now this time I'm going to need this circle to be slightly smaller than the one below it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, do free transform which is here under edit or you can do command T or control T as a shortcut um, and you can see that it has um, selected the, um, the circle. I'm going to press shift still on the keyboard which will mean that everything will stay in proportion as I decrease the size of it like so and I'm going to oh, I'm going to press ok but what I should have done sorry got rid of these one so we can see what we're doing. Let me try that again. Command T. And what it was, it would have been that size, but I just made it a bit smaller like that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to press OK. Oh, sorry. Before I press OK, I'm going to reposition it. So you can see um, the circle I've made is slightly smaller. And as I'm sort of moving that upper circle, it's just kind of like slotting into the center um, of the circle. Um, Photoshop is you know, quite a, um, a, an intelligent program where it's sort of 
making the assumption that I want to keep that shape um, dead center. Um, so I'm going to press enter on the keyboard. I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, so I'm going to make the next layer visible. Now, of course, that's that because this circle on this layer is the same size as the original circle, it's now hiding this one, which is slightly smaller. So I'm going to make them on this layer. So I'm going to you know, select it, which is blue. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, Command T. I'm going to keep the shift pressed down so that I keep everything in proportion. And then I'm going to make that circle a bit smaller. I'm going to take it a little bit smaller again. And what, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make sure that these um, areas between the circles are, are, are roughly equal in size. Um, and again, as I move it around, you know, it's me, Photoshop is helping me to make the assumption that it's wants, wants it to be dead center for me, like so. Just helping it to slot into place. And I'm going to press enter on the keyboard. And I'm going to do the next layer. So make sure it's selected blue. Again, Command T. Currently, it's really large. Press Shift, and then make this smaller. I think that went slightly off circular as I um, let go of that. I'm going to press Enter, and I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to take a step backwards here. This is my little history palette, which is really useful for you to know about if you don't already use it, where um, it, you can select. Um, certain steps back if you made a mistake, if um, your uh, outcome's not looking how you want it to. Um, let's make sure, oh, hang on, let me deselect that second. Make sure I'm on the right layer again. Select that right, command T. Let's try that again. Shift, and I'm trying not to pick lift off on shift before I stop the image. I think I've gone a little bit too small on this one, so I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. So I'm going to make sure I keep shift pressed again and enlarge it. There we go. So again, these sort of areas here look roughly equal in size. I'm happy with that. And it's in the center. So I'm going to press OK. Fabulous. Right, I'm going to make the bottom layer visible again. And you can see it's starting to get this um, concentric circle effect like David Copthorne has here. Um, I might add in maybe just one or two more layers, I think, um, to, to get this um, sort of more tunnel effect coming through. So I'm going to um, duplicate that layer. Press OK. And then making sure I'm on that one, I'm going to do Command T. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And we'll do it one more time. And then again, Command T, holding Shift, and make that one a bit smaller too. There we go. Okay. Now, what I'm going to need to do, I'm going to need to um, start to uh, shift the circles so that they look like they're twisting, uh, like in the stop David Copthorne original image as well. So I'm going to go back to my original circle down here, circle one. I'm going to press Command T. And it's going to select that image for me. And then as I hover over the um, corner uh, selection, you can see that the um, cursor turns into this bended arrow with two heads. That means when I um, click and turn, you can see that the image is starting to shift around slightly. So I'm going to pop it there and I'm going to press enter on the keyboard. I'm going to go up to the next layer and I'm going to do the same again, Command T. And I'm going to Oh, hang on, that's not what I wanted to do, hang on. <laughs> Let me um, press enter first and then step back. There we go. Let's try that again, Command T. Make sure I've got the double-headed arrow, that's better. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. That one there is what I want, Command T. That's more like it, there we go. Um, now what I'm doing, because I've already t twisted that first circle round, I can already see here where the um, that building initially stops. And as you can see over here on the David Copthorne image, he's got the corners of the building following um, those concentric circles down. So that's the kind of effect that I'm looking for here now as well. So I'm going to go on to the next layer. Um, again, Command T. And I'm going to, again, twist it around as if it's on like a little axis. And I'm going to work my way up the layers doing this technique all the way.
Okay, cool, right. So that's how that's looking so far. Now, on David Copperfield's image, he's obviously got this um, uh, circle right in the very centre of the image, which is what I assume would be there if you didn't have this surreal concentric circle effect coming through it. So I'm assuming it's almost like a little viewfinder. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to again duplicate that initial background layer down here. So I'm just going to press duplicate layer. Now when you duplicate a layer, it always brings it immediately above the one that you've duplicated. But I don't want it all the way down there, I want it to be the very top layer. So I'm gradually going to bring it up to be on top of all these circles, like so. And then what I'm going to do again, I'm going to use the elliptical tool and I'm going to press shift again to make sure that it stays as a circle. And I'm going to choose an area that I would like to be the viewfinder. I quite like that, it's got the, the American flag in it, it's got a few details in it, so I quite like that. So I'm going to, again, um, select an inverse and uh, backspace on the keyboard. And you can see that that's my little circle that's been selected. Um, I'm gonna press Command D to deselect, and then Command T to pre-transform, which means I can hold it and move it around a little bit. Now, what I'm hoping is, is the circle I've made is smaller than that larger circle, which I think it is. So let's just make it slightly larger. So I'm going to press shift and just bring it out slightly. Because what, again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep those spaces between the circles as equal as I can. That looks like a as equal as I can get it, so I'm going to press enter on the keyboard, and that's my little viewfinder hole as well. Um, and there we go, so that is my um, attempt at the David Copperthorne effect using the concentric circles and um, creating this very sort of like um, distorted reality effect with, um, with the uh, perspectives twisted around that sort of center point.